They have wow. no right to take those chips. Well, they did. Well, why did they? They said, we, you can't prove that they're yours. Okay, why do they have a right to take the chips? What's the law that says that they can take those chips? There's not one. Yeah. If you're around card counting and advantage play long enough, you are going to hear a story of a player's rights being completely trampled, whether it's by the casino or even state or local police. You're saying I could okay. be arrested for counting cards? Unfortunately, the vast majority of advantage players don't even know their rights, choosing to simply let them get trampled. Even if a player does know when his rights have been violated, most lawyers won't even take a case against the big bad casinos or local law enforcement. Bobner Session isn't most lawyers. For 30 years, Bob has been defending advantage players when their rights are violated. Along the way, Bob has won lawsuits worth millions of dollars for his clients and has even defended professional gamblers in a case that rose all the way to the U.S. Supreme Court. Hey, this is Colin from Blackjack Apprenticeship, and I'm joined by legendary lawyer Bob Session. How are you doing? Well, I think you were talking when I shrugged at you using the word legendary, but I'm pretty good. How are you? <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. So can you start off by sharing with us how you got into defending advantage players? There's actually a story there. <laughs> um, I, this is back. I'm a lawyer having come here from Nevada, and uh, I'm actually at a garage poker game and there's four lawyers and another guy sitting at the table he told a story where he got back roomed for card counting and uh he says you guys see anything there they let him out the front door and 86 them but he was definitely in the back room and for the lawyers sitting around the table the answer was no another answer was this here's nevada no Another answer was, they own the state? No. And I said, that's false imprisonment. I can get $15,000 on a phone call. Okay. Well, I don't know Nevada law that well. Yeah. And I have no business stepping out on these other three lawyers and pretending that I can do something that they've just said I can't. But I do know the law, and I know you can't take people and hold them in custody for nothing. Yeah. And I got $15,000 on a phone call. And from there, it's just worked forward. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So for those who are watching that just don't know anybody, I've been a card counter for 20 years, but I get it all the time. Is card counting ever considered illegal? Hasn't been that I've been able to find. Yes. Um, I have plenty of examples, anecdotal and even direct with arrests of people who say it is illegal. I have police officers in the back room, on video, at a casino, going, well, you were card counting. And the card counter going, so? And he goes, well, that's illegal. Yeah. No, it's not. But one of my cases, we went down to the police station. And uh, I was with the counter. Mm -hmm. And we wanted to report a false imprisonment. We told the story entirely, directly, truthfully. And the casino had taken this guy into custody and held him for two hours for card counting. They weren't even denying it. And the police said, we're not going to take that report. I said, what do you mean you're not going to take it? That's your job. And they go, your client just admitted he was card counting. I said, yeah. They go, that's illegal. This is way back in like 97. And um, we took that up the ladder and fought with Metro and the DA to convince them that you can't put handcuffs on people for card counting and you can't hold them and that is criminal false imprisonment. Still didn't see anyone arrested there, but since then I have seen some casino security and even casino executives arrested and charged with kidnapping and false imprisonment. Wow. Wow, talk about turning the tables. Well, let's hope. What what were some of the stories that you started hearing? back when you got started uh, about uh, people's civil or uh, people's constitutional rights being violated by casinos? Well, you got a misnomer there. Okay. A casino cannot violate your constitutional okay. rights. It takes state action. A state has to be involved or government employees have to be involved to violate your constitutional rights. There are parallel rights under the common law. Okay. For example, false imprisonment. You have a right to be free from being imprisoned falsely. 
But that's not a constitutional yeah. right. That's a right under the law. So, so, well, what are some stories of people's rights being violated, whether constitutional or personal? These guys are living in fear. The advantage gamblers are living in fear for their life mm. every time they go to ply their trade because the opposition, if you will, the casinos and their security goons are out there not only to prevent that from happening, but to punish when they find it out. So with that being everywhere, um, like I said, hearing about it was ubiquitous. There was not, at the time, one of the big forums was BJ21. And uh, everybody on there ha had their own stories. Um, Tommy Highland, like somebody you mentioned, or we've talked about, um, obviously he went all the way through the ringer in um, Canadian courts. I believe the I believe the casino was Casino Windsor, and I'm from Detroit, and I'm even familiar with it, um, or the Windsor Casino, and uh, it was all over nothing. Yeah. Um, but uh, every once in a while, and even today in some states, they can glom onto a prosecutor who just can't understand that being a better gambler than the casino is not allowed. Yeah. Okay. Um, and and so, like I said, I, I was hearing it from everywhere, but only not until I did that telephone call case because before that I was just a business attorney. Okay. Um, yeah, this has taken over half of my practice since I started doing it. And but there's that much, there are that many players' rights being violated. Ah, oh, there's three times as many. I'm wow. turning most yeah. away. Yeah. Um, have to. I, they do have limits on how much you can get. And, you know, it's got to be worth your just time. Get out of here, you lying thief. That's defamation. Okay. It's actionable. Am I going to take that case? No. Yeah. The guy who was called a lying thief in front of two people he's never going to see again, he thinks that he has been just so debased that I should spend my, the next two years of my life winning that case for him so that I can take yeah. away eight grand of the 20 that he's getting. Yeah. And no, I've got, I, there's just too much out there to do the yeah. better things than to use up all the time on every call that comes in. Yeah. So card counting is not illegal, but you do tell a story in your book of some uh, card counters that are using team play that get arrested. Has team play ever been considered cheating uh, in in the in the courts? Depends. All right. Okay. There are certain conventions to blackjack. Okay, husband and wife blackjack. I can show you my cards. Or Steve and Jim blackjack. I can show you my yeah. cards, and I go, "What would you do?" Okay. Yes. Is that team play? If it falls within something that is already authorized and allowed within the game, any arrest for that is going to go nowhere and it would not be illegal. If, however, you've got a guy standing across the way and he happens to have uh, 2010 vision and he can literally see the whole card from an angle nobody else can and he can signal you from off the table while you're on the table, that would be team play and you're going to go yeah. to jail. But that's illegal because you're signaling something you're not supposed to be seeing from the table. Is that correct? That's illegal because you're not part of the game and they will actually literally construe the person across the other side of the pit as a device. Oh, wow. What about just signals for, hey, the count is high over at this table and I scratch my head and to everything signal. i've seen to this point says that's fine why do you think some of these casinos react so strongly to advantage players there there's so many reasons okay one of them that i think would be underrepresented in anybody's analysis of your question is jealousy and hubris hmm. okay and i'm not kidding these guys are all run by people who think they're the best gamblers in the world I have a ton of respect for Benny Binion from a thousand different angles. There's a thousand other angles I have issues, yeah. okay? But the one thing that you can't do to these guys and Benny Binion or the people who are like him now, who are at the heads of casinos, 
They hire the best. They pay for the best. And when they get their ass kicked, they can't believe it happened. So hubris. Yeah. Um, you're not allowed to do that to me. I'm the king of this freaking hill. Don't you think? Yeah. Yeah. So there's some of that. And others are just bottom line. You scare enough people away and the people who are going to be better gamblers than you aren't going to show up. Um, you know, if, you, if you're playing Monopoly with the little girl up the street and she gets the better of you and you pick up the table and flip it over and say, take your Monopoly game and get out of my house. <laughs> do you think she's going to play with you again? No, absolutely not. But the but that's the attitude kind yeah. of attitude they have, and they don't want to play with you now. Yeah, uh, they're flipping their tables all the time. That's what putting you out on the street is. It's it's t it's sweeping the chessboard, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. We just expected casinos could do that to us twenty years ago. I'm just glad it's it's. You're, you're what twenty three? What were you doing yeah. twenty years ago? <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm 42, but yeah, really? okay. I started started counting, counting cards pretty young, and and we just assumed it was part of it. Get you know getting backroomed and and uh, you know cuffed here and there. Uh, but usually well, it tribal. would lose a lot of its spice if that never happened. <laughs> so in in uh, the law for gamblers, you you share about basically a dozen different forms of advantage play, and in the the law we're not going to get into all those, but one more that commonly is asked is hole carding. Do you mind sharing uh, where the law stands on hole carding? Okay, this would be the part you got to show on camera, I think. So let's make sure I'm on. That's cheating. Don't do it. Oh, could you see that? Could you see it? Okay. okay. Are you going to get arrested and put in jail for it? Probably not. Something people don't understand is the juries are human. Okay. If you aren't a good person, mm. you aren't going to walk away with a lot of money. And the guy who every time that dealer goes, goes to put down her hole card has noticed that she's looking in a different direction. So he goes, no, you're not a good person. You, the, every juror who watches you do that will say you're a cheater. When I see that film, I'm not taking your case. Yeah. You're not even going to find a lawyer. Yeah. Um, and as to whether or not it is actually cheating, I can think of some ways where judges could say that yes, it is. Just, just not doing that, but just if you're sitting at a chair normally, and you happen to be a very short guy, or who, like some people, can compress their spine four vertebra as you drop yourself down. I think you're okay. Yeah. But if you're sitting there and they, and, and you're a smarmy shit at the table and you are a, you are incidentally a card counter too. And they've actually come over. This has happened and they've actually come over and you are being centered out because you're a disorderly putz. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And they are putting you out of the casino. And my client is absolutely certain that this is because he's a card counter. No, but he's, he's, it's because he's a jerk. It's because he's an asshole. Yeah, you yeah. Know? And in that yeah. case, I'm not going to win that case. Yeah. Besides, they can put you out at any or no time for any or no reason. Yeah. Um, now, I, I've had some success with that, but I am not going to break away from that rule. That is the rule. So if you're a card counter or you're an honest, straight up guy who they mistakenly think is a card counter, mm -hmm. either way, you're out the door yeah. and you have to leave. Yeah. Um, the hardest one I'm having exception with, and this is interesting, I don't think you have to go if they stolen your chips. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, I don't need anybody relying on this because right now I have two incidences of police officers who have arrested an individual whose chips the casino literally stole. They're, they're holding the chips. They're holding the money. They haven't paid for the chips. The guy went to turn them in. And now they go, thank you, Mr. Card Counter. Now get out of our casino. Okay. I've got a Mississippi case and I've got logic that says when they're stealing from you, you don't have to leave. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right now, though, I don't have at 
this particular point, yes, I do. I do have two courts who have said so, but I do not have a national rule on that yet. Okay. And I should be able to get a national rule because it is just so insane for the casino to think that they can have you arrested because they stole your chips. I'm glad you brought that up. That was actually my next question is, assuming you're, you're just counting cards, what are you supposed to do when they're saying you have to leave, but they're not going to uh, cash your chips? You're supposed to call the game and control board. Okay. You're supposed to call the Game and Control Board. The Game and Control Board is supposed to come out there to investigate. The Game and Control Board, if you get a good investigator or a proper agent, will look at the situation and go, he was card counting? And the casino will go, yeah. And they're saying, and you're not paying him? And the casino will go, yeah. And he goes, all right, I'm going to go do my investigation and I'm going to reach a ruling. But understand you're at risk here, Mr. Casino, mm -hmm. because you are required to promptly pay those chips. And I'm not saying I'm not going to find you didn't fail to promptly pay those chips. Now, what do you want to do? Mm -hmm. Okay. And they better pay the damn chips because a, a gaming control agent and a gaming control board acting in their authority and as it's been designated to them only has one choice. And that is to tell, tell the casino to pay up and pay up now because anything less is theft. Mm -hmm. And and here's an interesting thing. Think about the gaming control board. You've, you're familiar with what they are and who mm -hmm. they are, right? Yeah. What are they then? What is their first and primary responsibility? And read the statutes behind it. They are a consumer protection yes, agency. Yes. They are there for the gambler to make sure that our games are honest. And in that sense, be there for the state of Nevada because the only way people play our games is if they keep our games honest and hold the casinos to the rules, right? Yes. Well, so I'm not saying you don't run into these agents. Mm -hmm. I have. Um, I actually had a supervising agent at a deposition who sat there and said that a casino has every right to hold the chips. They're theirs. Huh. And I'm going, what about this promptly pay? Yeah. That's right there in the regulations. What about the fact that, that in, the, in this other regulation right there, it says that this is a representative of value to the holder versus the chip issuer? Do, either, do both of those mean nothing? And he goes, they don't mean anything until you fight it all the way to the end and force, him to pay, and force them to pay. Before that, they can treat you any way they want to. I'm like, you're the guy that yeah. we have put in charge to a level of protecting the gamblers in Nevada? Please, go take a shower. You need one. Oh, God, I, I had that guy. Wow. And it, now, they're not all like that. You will get others that... Uh, the rule is, you're called out, you see that the circumstance we just described, let's say they're asking for ID and you're refusing. Yes. Okay? And truth be told, there is absolutely no law anywhere that says you have to show ID for anything under $10,000, and even for amounts over $10,000, that's debatable. Mm. The casino's obligations and abilities are to file what's called an SAR, and you're never gonna find out about it. Yeah. That's a suspicious activity yeah. report. So all of that being said, um, an agent acting properly should show up, and if he finds out that the casino has chips, and has not redeemed them, and the player has handed them to them for redemption, he should see that that casino immediately redeems because that's what the law requires them to do. That person, that patron, mm -hmm. is who they're charged with protecting. And they are literally charged with protecting them against that big evil casino. Mm -hmm. So the idea that we have gaming agents or members of the Game and Control Board in the past who have completely flipped that responsibility and all of a sudden our job is to protect the casino against the patron? Oh, holy crap, how yeah. backwards can you get? Even if uh, you don't want to give ID and they're saying, well, you have to give ID to cash the chips. You should try to get gaming down there. And if they, just for your own protection, if they say get out of our casino, get gaming down there while you're on the front Side, on the front public sidewalk and talk to them there yeah. and tell them they put me out of the casino while stealing my chips and use that word mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. now i'm going to explain something and this is a hard concept to get the casino owns those chips mm -hmm. 
how can you how can the casino steal those chips well the word isn't really necessarily steal it's convert okay the law regarding chips and other personal property such as chips and even cash if it's if it's nominated cash for a given thing is that the guy holding it, it we, you don't deal with who owns it it's who has the right to possession and the patron has the right to possession of those chips okay and the casino while they own them has to do certain things to regain p- t- possession give you money give you money exactly so it is it is truly theft minimally it's truly conversion okay. and the casino is acting illegally when they do that i don't know what has come over these casinos where they think they can get away with it except that yeah. there have been gaming agents over the years who have said well we're not going to get involved in this mm-hmm. well wait a minute that's your job every single time i have been there when this went down and that's three times the casino it came down to this well they're worried about your client's age okay here's my client's driver's license i've got his name covered i'm holding the driver's license you can see the picture is the same he's over 21 would you please tell them to pay okay every single time that agent has said pay the man okay but i'm not going to be there for you and you're on your own Mm -hmm. and that's a very special thing to get done um i even had just to give you another side story on one like that it was at caesar's Mm -hmm. the guy was using what i would call an alias identification Mm -hmm. a legal alias i'll just call it an alias identification it happened to be a i believe it was a north carolina driver's license okay and it wasn't his name on it. Okay. Okay. It is illegal in Nevada to use a counterfeit driver's license. Sounds like they got him cold, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Nope. Nevada also defines what a driver's license is. A driver's license is a document to give you authority to move on the roads in Nevada issued by the Nevada Department of oh. Motor Vehicles. Wow. Oh. Okay, right there in the same thing. And I've got a cop looking at me going, we're taking your guy to jail. And I'm going, wait a minute, here's the statute. I brought it with me. And a driver's license is defined as issued by the Nevada Department of Motor Vehicles. Right there. Here's what you have what he was using. Look at it and tell me where it says it was issued by the Nevada Department of Motor Vehicles. In fact, it says it wasn't issued by them. That's not a driver's license. (laughs) the cop called his bosses which is what they do and then if his bosses don't know it they work it up till they get a lawyer on the phone that somehow works for metro and that's where this all went Mm -hmm. and at the end of the day they grabbed the driver's license when he went to cash in an eighty thousand dollar jackpot okay and the first words with the cop were your guy's going to jail and he's not getting his eighty thousand dollars today anyway okay and at the end of the day the cop said to me okay walk you you, he's allowed to still be here to walk up to the cage where they're going to pay him the 80 grand Mm -hmm. and i can't believe i'm doing this and he handed me the alias driver's license and he goes we did put a hole in it though (laughs) <laughs> so so we left with that driver's license because it wasn't illegal yeah i you cannot i cannot you cannot rewrite what the legislature writes yeah. and here they specifically and emphatically said wow. issued by the department of nevada department of motor vehicles wow. so don't count on that happening again but it did happen that's crazy are, are there any state licensed casinos that uh, have a right to refuse cashing out chips? Well, there are times when they have a right to refuse. Okay. Okay. And that's all casinos. Yes. One is if they know or have reasonable cause to suspect that you did not get those chips through gaming activities at their casino Mm -hmm. that means from the cage or from a table Mm -hmm. but listen to what the prerequisite is 
they know or reasonably should yeah. suspect. That's not possession. Okay. Mm-hmm. I'm just pulling out somebody who could be rich and could throw money around like it means nothing. Mm-hmm. Okay. This is not related to this person in any way, shape, or form. Dennis Rodman's playing craps. Sure. Okay. You're a short little guy that looks like Danny DeVito standing next to him. And Dennis Rodman reaches over and he rubs his dice on your head. You're not even playing. You're just standing there. And he goes, give me luck, little guy. And he throws him and hits a seven and wins 50 grand. All right. They pay him in, in 10, what's a five, 10 pinks. Is, uh-huh. is that a 5,000? Uh, 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 5,000 are chocolates. Okay. They pay him in uh, 10 chocolates. Okay, he takes one of the chocolates, hands it to you, and says, "Thank you." The casino says oh, yeah. that happened. Oh, you yeah. walk up to the cage to cash that five grand. Yeah, they go no. Yeah. Okay. Now, what do you think you do with that? You think that you've just sucked up on five grand, right? Uh huh. Why? All it says is they shall not redeem. Okay. Now it's up to the board. Okay. All right. You can take that five grand and say, all right, here's how I got it. I got it honestly. Yeah. What is this thing in my hand? Uh Uh-huh. This is a representative of value of a debt owed by the casino to the person who possesses it. That's me. The casino owes me a debt of $5,000 because I possess Mm -hmm. this check. Now, you've done your investigation. You know exactly how I got it. I did not do anything nefarious or illegal to get it. Please order to the casino to pay this chip. Interesting. Does it work? Don't know. But I think it should. That's interesting because I've not played with Dennis Rodman. Uh, craps. He's never rubbed my head with a chip. But when we were running a million-dollar card counting team, we had a player. He had some chocolates, some $5,000 chips. And he had a flight to catch, so we gave him to another teammate. Everything we did was legal. Caesar's Palace confiscated the chips and said, "Prove to us the rightful owner of these chips, and we won't cash it out, or, or we won't cash it out." He had to catch a flight. We bought him the next flight back to Vegas to cash him out. Okay, a couple of things. They have no right to take those chips. Well, they did. Well, why did they? They said, they said we, you can't prove that they're yours. Okay, why do they have a right to take the chips? What's the law that says that they can take those chips? There's not one. Yeah. And who has a right to possession of the chips? The holder. Mm. Okay? If they could show they were stolen, they would have a superior right in those chips. But that's not what they're showing. Yeah. They're showing, they're saying, we don't know. That's not, we don't know is not a superior right. This happens all the time to us. I know it does. Stop it. Stand (laughs) up for yourselves. But you need people who are willing to be outed by name Mm -hmm. and identity. But in in the one you're describing, you lost the guy who had to fly back and show his ID. Yeah. There was a recent case. It was one of mine. It's called Young versus Nevada Gaming Control Board. And it dealt with Hard Rock because the casinos for 30 years have been saying you have to prove to us that you won the chips here Hmm. that's not what the law says the law says the casino has the burden of knowing or should have knowing that you didn't get them there Mm -hmm. that's the complete opposite but the but the the gaming control board because nobody had the the gaming control board in the young case literally held that the casino was right. That although the statute said that the burden was on the casino to know or suspect, reasonably suspect, they put the burden on the player to prove, which is, again, not what the statute says, not even close. You can't look at that as anything other than a willful attempt by the board to give the casino authority to hold chips that the law never gave it, okay? But they did it. Mm -hmm. So we took it to the Supreme Court of Nevada, and the Supreme Court of Nevada said, patron means patron, pay the man. Yeah. Okay? So let's go to the the $3,000 limits here in Nevada. Is What $3,000 limits? That they say, well, we need... They're lying. All right. They're lying! (laughs) So so what, what... Every casino in Nevada says is if it's over $3,000, we have a right to demand ID for a cash. They're lying. 
There's they're lying. What about and same with other states, Oklahoma? Yeah, sure. Well, I don't know. There, I don't know. See, we used to have a regulation that had amounts and times when casinos were supposed to get ID before cashing chips. Mm -hmm. We repealed that regulation in light of FinCEN. And before that, you literally, it, there was a regulation that said casinos will get ID to cash these amounts, okay? Mm -hmm. That was repealed, there's no law that says so. Uh, the $3,000 one, yeah. there's no law that says that. What the law says, as near as I can tell, I'm not going to go out on a limb here, okay. but they can never require ID, not even on a $30,000 cash out. Hmm. Okay. You know what they can do on a $30,000 cash out? Suspicious activity. Report? Take your picture, staple it to a um, SAR, draft up an SAR that says, he refused our reasonable demand for identification while cashing out more than $10,000 in chips. The picture of that person is attached. We've also run it through Biometrica, and his name is Steve Smith. His social security number is XYZ. The point is, if it's over ten grand and you're refusing, there's every possibility that they're still going to know who you are. Yeah. And now they are literally going to come and track yeah. you down and at least investigate you for structuring. Yeah, now you're in trouble. But under, but you're not in trouble because you tried to cash chips and wouldn't give ID yeah. for 10000 in chips. Uh -huh. You're in trouble because you're not doing what FinCEN has deemed reasonable, which is providing ID to cash over 10000 in chips. But there's no regulation or anything else that gives them a $3,000 level. Their constant refrain is, well, we don't know how many times he's doing it and that therefore he could be structuring and we got to make sure that he doesn't do more than $10,000 in a 24-hour period. You want to put the lie to that one? Hmm. Look at all the other times that they're saying we can track trips, every one of them all the time and know who's cashing them and where they got them. And they've said that in writing a dozen times that I'm aware of. So if they have that ability, how can they then not have the ability to know that your 3,000 isn't structured with two other cash outs in the last 24 hours? Mm -hmm. They're the ones with the cameras. They're the ones with the people who are documenting all these cash outs at 200, 600, 13,000, 5,000. And the other one is, you got to understand, that 99, 99. <laughs> yeah. That's a safe harbor. Mm. It is not. I mean, uh, casinos treat the 99.99 as suspicious yes. of structuring. No, it is exactly the opposite. Wow. By definition, 99.99 is less than 10,000, and it is by definition not suspicion of wow. structuring. You know, they, they literally have to rewrite the statutes to do what they want. Yeah. And that's FinCEN, too. And FinCEN's a little crazy. I've been to some seminars they put on, and they want everybody to think that the casinos can ask for any ID at any amount of money at any time, and they want you to think that you can go to jail for not providing it. But if you're not structuring, you really can't because you're not committing a crime, uh, structuring or money laundering. And if you're doing neither of those, there's no crime. Um, so... The, I, I have a hard time abiding by government control mm -hmm. over reasons that are just bullshit. Mm -hmm. And this is one that is government control where they don't even have the reasons and they have to make it up. That's wrong. Yeah. That's my opinion. So going back to a CTR, let's say you're, you know, we always are, we told our players, hey, yeah, you reached the $10,000 limit don't lie don't you know well what forms of id are valid for that your yeah. driver's license that's it what about a passport, passport would be passport what about a i what? don't know i don't know you know you, you know you're you're saying what if i bring a utility bill three utility <laughs> bills for three months while i lived at the same address in this state that's enough to get a driver's license but i don't think it's enough to satisfy fence <laughs> yeah okay. so so in Vegas, like if, let's say you have six thousand and they're just refusing to cash out three more than three thousand without the ID, can you technically just stand there and just 
force them to pay you out? No, they're going to tell you to get out of our casino, and then they're going to arrest you for trespassing. Then you got to fight the trespassing case. And now the, the thing to do is to get... If you can, get gaming out there and ask them to explain to gaming the reason why they're not cashing your chips. And if they say it's our policy, your retort is they can't have a policy. I've already done everything in our contract. Our contract is over. Mm -hmm. I have chips. The law says promptly redeem. It doesn't say show ID Mm -hmm. anywhere. Mm I have the chips. I have the law. All they've got is a big bunch of whiny people standing behind their cashier's table because they want to sell my name to Vejas in Southern California. So let's say that um, the gaming agent says, I need to check your ID. You know, you show it to and he gives it to the casino. Call me. Okay. I had that happen. If you tell them, don't show it to the casino, and they show it to the casino, there is a case out of Mississippi called Grosh Mm -hmm. versus Tunica, and it's the Hollywood casino down there, um, where the federal judge came out very strongly and said, you have no right, uh, a a gaming, in this case, a cop, has no right to share the information on that identification with a casino. And it is just that clear of a statement, and it is just that clear. Show me any statute that says they can. They don't have one. Yeah. My situation was, it was a tribal, it it was not tribal police, it was a local police officer, and he cuffed me, and he took my ID, and he gave it straight to the casino. Yeah. And, uh, Southern California. Mm-hmm. Yeah. By the end of it, he's he took all the money out of my pockets. He called me names, and once he figured out that I was a law-abiding citizen, he backtracked. But you know, I had no, I had no recourse on. Yeah, you did. You could have su- you sued him in the Southern District of California Federal District Court for invasion of your personal papers without reasonable cause. Remember the Fourth Amendment. You can't only you're not only barred from searching, but you are entitled to protection in your personal papers. What's your driver's license? My personal papers? I would think so, wouldn't you? Isn't that exactly what that amendment is there for? So you gave it up, but you yeah. did give it up because you were forced to. And forcing the the state forcing the government forcing you to give up something that you have a constitutional right to not give up yeah. is actionable. And you get to collect your attorney's fees if you win. Is it worth fighting being arrested for trespassing when you've been previously trespassed? Okay. I do not want to encourage anybody to break the law. (laughs) Seriously? Yeah. In... I've represented eight people who've been charged with trespassing through trial. Now, in every one of those instances, I had a defense. I have never seen somebody convicted who takes a trespass charge to trial. One, the courts don't want to be burdened with that, and neither does the DA. So, but these were actual trials. Short of trials, the DA, if you stick to your guns, will generally dismiss it, but will generally dismiss it because you're right. Okay, when you look at things globally, it becomes abundantly clear in almost every instance that, at least with advantage gamblers, the casino either fabricated the trespass after they already detained you Mm -hmm. or, um, Or, like the earlier example I said, is holding something that is literally keeping you there while they're telling you you have to leave. Mm -hmm. And um, so those are the ones that I get dismissed. Yeah. But I do know that as a general rule, and I don't want this to become policy by stating it, but oftentimes the DA will dismiss trespass charges on the same basis of cost-benefit 
uh, before they come to trial or even before arraignment. So I can give the, the example. My player on our team, Mark, he's been trespassed by a casino three times. He goes back a fourth time. He's playing and they come down, security guards. He just takes his chips and runs. They catch him, cuff him, spends a night in jail. Is it worth fighting that, that case? What are you going to fight it for? For false imprisonment. No, that's a tort. To become innocent, maybe, but what do you gain by becoming innocent to a trespass charge? You're going to get fined $150 and told to stay out of trouble for six months. Yeah. That doesn't meet the cost benefit, yes. and you're, but you're still going to have a misdemeanor conviction on your record. I don't know how else to answer that, <laughs> um, but... Uh, well, we could, we could. I, I, I have fought a number of things through trial. Usually, the reason I fight them through trial is there is a doctrine in the law that if they, if you are tried and convicted, or even if you plea to a crime, that now provides probable cause to the casino taking you into custody. Mm. And if there's yeah. probable cause. You don't have a false imprisonment claim. Yes. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So you got to try them. And I have. I'm 12 and 0 as near as I can reckon on the underlying charges. But I only understand. I only take a case that has the criminal arrest on the front side. Mm -hmm. If I have already very closely studied it and know that that arrest was wrongful. Yeah. Because I'm in to prove the arrest was wrongful as it is. So winning the criminal trial is something that I've already written into the equation. In other words, if I'm doing the criminal trial, I'm only representing people who are innocent. Mm -hmm. And if I'm only representing people who are innocent, your friend who was trespassed three times, not innocent. Yep. Yep. Wouldn't, wouldn't, I wouldn't take that to yeah. trial. Yeah. I would plead it because mm -hmm. He did something wrong. My clients, the one, the 12 I'm talking yes. about, did nothing wrong. I mean, it, it ran the gambit. One of, one, of, one of them had the film of the casino security jumping my client from behind and then charging my client with uh, attacking their security. Okay. Another one had three five security guards attacking three guys filming out in front of the casino and literally jumping them and throwing them into the streets and they were the the casino was trying to say they were trespassing while they were while the film showed they were on a public sidewalk wow. in front of the Riviera okay that's not trespassing yeah, yeah. <laughs> so um, that and so when you get a case like that, which are the kinds I'm taking, yeah. it's not usually there's video evidence and it's not going to be yeah. that hard to prove the innocence. And then, and and when you do win it at a trial too, the value later down the road for the false imprisonment case skyrockets yeah. because you've already beat it at a trial. Yeah. You've shown innocence, if you yeah. will. Although it says technically all you've shown is not guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. What jury's going to look at that and not think, wow, this guy's already proved he was innocent. Yeah. I, I want to read this question. There's one from one of our members. I want to make sure I get it right. If you're in a two-party state and casino personnel attempt to detain you, is there any legal ramification to videotaping them with your cell phone without their consent? I can't go. I can't do this sure. one. I'm sorry. No problem. I haven't studied this close okay. enough. I do know that even in a two-party state, if you're filming police officers, mm -hmm. you're okay. Okay. All right? Because police officers, it is your First Amendment right to report public activities, mm -hmm. even if you're not technically a reporter. Mm -hmm. So you have, mm -hmm. if you will, a freedom of the press right mm -hmm. to film government employees doing their jobs, mm -hmm. which is a police officer who is trying to arrest you mm -hmm. or de making illegal demands on you mm -hmm. or making on illegal demands on your friend while you're over here filming them. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, in case you might want to read that I did 
is Mills versus Maryland live. It uh -huh. was in federal yes. court in Maryland. You know the case? Yes, that that the police were detaining him, and and I mean the videos on YouTube of, of him sitting there saying, "What do I want to do here? Uh, because you're you're holding me against my will, and uh, this is false imprisonment. What am I going to do here?" Yeah, it's a it's a great one to watch on YouTube, and and reading the actual cases because there I think there's two or three published decisions on it. Mm -hmm while watching it on YouTube really takes it to a new level mm -hmm. because you get to see just how crazy casinos can be. Yeah. And this casino was freaking crazy. <laughs> and so were the cops, by the way. Can you imagine a cop? This, this cop avoided summary judgment against him mm. by saying that the casino executive informed him that i think it's baltimore is that maryland line yeah. that baltimore had passed an ordinance making card counting illegal um obviously they hadn't and obviously no reasonable person could believe that yeah um and just think of the modalities for one moment about how you would literally make card counting illegal how would you do that? How would you enforce it? And under what theory would you institutionalize a mental, a mental, um, advantage to a casino? Yeah. Get outlaw thinking here. Yes, outlaw thinking. Perfect. I am dead serious. Casinos are not the best gamblers in the world, and they have no business persecuting people who are better gamblers than them. And that's all this is. Yeah. You know? If a police officer yes. requires ID without probable cause. You've mixed terms and metaphors. <laughs> okay. The question you want to ask yeah. is if a police officer wants ID without reasonable suspicion. Yes. Okay. Probable cause and reasonable suspicion are two different things. Okay. Probable cause, they are always entitled, always entitled to ID. Okay. Reasonable suspicion, which is that there are sufficient reasonable or there are sufficient facts of articulable facts. You got to be able to say what they are. They can't be hunches. Sufficient articulable facts present that a reasonable police officer in like or similar circumstances could conclude that illegal activity is, has, or may be about to occur. Okay. Sound it, it, it sounded simple, but play around with that a while. There's permutations on permutations in there. So that's reasonable suspicion. If that exists, they can still demand ID. The time they can't demand ID is when it is what is called a citizen encounter and they don't have reasonable suspicion or probable cause. You can always get ID for either of those and never get ID if you don't have one of them. Okay. Technically. The case is Brown versus Texas. It's a United States Supreme Court case. It's still good law. And it says that there's no such thing as stop an ID under the United States Constitution. Okay, that's good. That's good. Uh, good explanation. What is the easiest way to explain in a sentence or two to a cop that, hey, I'm an advantage player or I'm, I'm a card counter and what I'm doing is legal? You just did it and you, are you going to... That's it. Yeah. What are you going to do? And what's he going to say? I don't know what a card counter is. I don't know what advantage gambling is. What I know is I've got three guys with a casino who tell me that they think you're cheating. Mm -hmm. Okay. And they've been, from my discussions with them, they've been watching you for two days and you seem to know what the cards are before they're dealt. Now does he have enough articulable facts to provide reasonable suspicion? Probably. Hmm. And isn't that a shame because you didn't do anything wrong? All right, but that's what you would say. And then, and then call a lawyer. <laughs> yeah.
Now, sometimes if you can get the lawyer on the phone mm -hmm. while you're in the middle of this, yeah. and it's not me, mm -hmm. sure. <laughs> okay. um, you can get the lawyer on the phone, and I have talked down three cops from that. You know, why, why do you need his ID? He's out here in the middle of, this is my phrase, not his, bump. Egypt walking along a street and he had just left the casino and we want to know who he is and where the hell he's going because this is no place to be walking. It's a dirt road for Christ's sakes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I said, well, I explained he's leaving because the casino wishes to persecute him. That's why they called you. Mm -hmm. And it's reasonable any person in his position would not want to be persecuted by somebody as powerful and wealthy and in control as Mohegan's son. So he just desires to be on his way until he can get some friend out there to pick him up. Does that make sense? And what does that do to your reasonable suspicion? That guy walked. Huh. Yeah. No, I was as nice as I could possibly yeah. be to the cop, yeah. understand. And I wasn't trying to snow him in any way. It's just... You have to, the, you, you've got to get the cap off of his reasonable suspicion and what the casino has put in his mm -hmm. head. And what are the chances that you're going to be able to do it? Yeah. But again, nothing gives him the authority to turn that ID over to the casino yeah. and remind him of that. Yeah. So what about the databases? Is there any merit to legally going after these databases that are sharing and sp spreading private information it's not private information because they got it from somebody who got it publicly the uh, addresses i uh well when you license handed them, when you handed them your driver's when you parked in their parking lot they can take a picture of your car when you handed him your your driver's license and they dip the they dip it in that thing and get the all the information yeah. off the strip you freaking gave it to them yeah okay uh -huh. Give them something that has a strip on the back that says John Smith. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, well, you gave it to them. It's not private information. Yeah. It's their information. And they, have a, they are legally allowed to share it with whoever they want. It's their information. It's not yours any longer. You gave it away. Got it. Got it. Didn't you? Yeah. Sure. All right. <laughs> Hate that, huh? <laughs> yeah. Any horror stories or legal victories that you could share with us in, as in regards to civil forfeiture? Well, Gina had a legal victory. She and her friend are playing in San Juan, mm -hmm. which is the United States, by the way, uh -huh. even though certain federal agents may think it's a foreign country. Yeah. <laughs> um, and they have, they've won 90 grand plus playing at Hotel San Juan. Mm -hmm. Okay. They're flying back. The cash is espied at San Juan International Airport, and they are told that they are probably going to be questioned when they reach Las Vegas about the cash, mm -hmm. but they don't stop them from getting on the plane or anything. Well, these government agencies, you know, they share stuff, and somehow in Atlanta, mm -hmm. of all places, some DEA agent who's actually some punk state cop who got on the DEA list as an adjunct to assist them found, I guess he found out about this because he stopped them, but he waited until the airplane, the money was in their carry on. Mm -hmm. He waited till they got off the airplane, he waited till they got a meal. He waited till they lounged around a little bit, and then as either the connection or their flight or the continuation was leaving, as they started getting back on the plane and were already in line to go through the door, that's the first time he walked up to him and said, hey, what's in the bags? Mm -hmm. He said, money. He said, I'll take that, thank you. Very little more than that. And he just took the money and he said, you can stay here and fight about it or you can get on the airplane and deal with it later. He stole the freaking money. A United States Drug Enforcement agent stole the money. Mm -hmm. Can I say that again? He stole the money, <laughs> all right? So within two days, Gina and her partner were in my office. We had to the U.S. attorney the following. 
the win report from Hotel San Juan, which matched up with the money they were carrying. Their tax returns that show that these are very honest gamblers who literally report income as professional gamblers on an annual basis. Their trip report from where they went and how they won the money. It was a circle trip. I think they were in Connecticut and then down to Florida and then to San Juan and then back to Vegas. All right. So everything was documented. Mm -hmm. Okay. And this crazy cop who, what did he do? He stole the money. (laughs) All right. Um, Turned around and didn't even, at first led me to believe that he would look at the stuff. As near as I could tell, he never looked at it at all. Okay. Um, Then it ended up with a U.S. attorney, assistant U.S. attorney. In this case, it was a woman named Daheel Goss, G-O-S-S. And I have real problems with AGs, assistant U.S. attorneys or whatever, AUSAs. And uh, she's, she was a boss down there in Atlanta. And I'm on the phone with her. And I said, you got real issues on this one. And I explained it. And she was like, oh, I don't think my agents would do that. Okay. I'm like, okay, well, here's... And I sent her the whole package that I had sent him. Mm-hmm. She calls me back like four days later or four days after she gets it. And she says, I've been through your stuff. She goes, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. And this is unheard of as near as I can tell. And she says, okay, if you will sign a release of any liability for this agent, we'll send you the money back. Wow. And I went out on a limb and I said, we're not about to sign a release. The fact that you're offering me this tells me what I need to know. Yeah. And I said, so please reevaluate this and give me a call back. And she called me back, I think within a day, said, we're sending you a check. Wow. Okay. I know you talk about this in your book, but just quickly, what is the best way to avoid civil forfeiture on the road? No one way is the best way. The worst way is to try and hide it in your car wrapped up in duct tape and aluminum foil in your trunk. Yeah. You've now given two signals that it's drug money. Mm -hmm. Plus, a dog has likely already hit on it because 83% of the small bills in the United States already have drug residue on them. Mm -hmm. All right. So you've buried yourself there. Uh, Next, cops are all about being able to search your car and look for the money okay uh deny the search make them bring out the dogs Mm -hmm. if that's what they're going to do so say i don't give you permission to search my car right you're gonna have to be you're gonna be there they're gonna tell you and they're telling the truth you're gonna be here for an extra two hours while we bring a dog out we'll bring a dog out Mm -hmm. okay because now they've put because if they find the money they're taking it They are, okay? Too many examples of them just stealing the money, Mm -hmm. all right? So if they find the money, they're taking it. Um, So you put, when when you make them bring the dogs out, you now have two more levels you can challenge. Was it reasonable to bring out the dogs? And then are the dogs rightly trained? Mm -hmm. If either of those are answered no, you get your money back. So make them jump through every freaking possible hoop. But hopefully you don't get to that situation. The first, so the, the first thing you do is you deny them access to your vehicle. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, or try to. Mm-hmm. Uh, don't get belligerent or shitty. Mm-hmm. Because it's the same thing as casinos being jealous that you're a better gambler. If you know the law better than a cop, yeah. <laughs> he's, um, they suspect if you're a single human being driving in a car at the speed limit on an interstate. I'm serious. This is, I, I don't know what, I don't, these cops sit there and argue that this guy was driving one mile under the speed limit and had stayed at that for 22 miles while I tracked him. 
and he never sped and he never wavered out of his lane. Okay. That's suspicious. And you know what? They're right. Who drives like that? All right. But the flip side is if you swerve out of your lane, or if you go two miles over the speed limit, they have every right to stop you. Mm. Now, some courts have talked on this and said, no, you can't say not violating the law gives reasonable suspicion. And you got to hope that you can rely on that. So, so follow the law would be another way. Because if you do waver out of your lane, they can stop you. Yeah. Okay. But if they have to divert to the... He never violated the law, therefore that's suspicious because everybody violates the law. And so we had reasonable suspicion. There's a chance that one won't fly. Yeah. But certainly it's a damned if you do, damned if you don't situation that they have tried to set up in the stop. Uh, what else can you do? When you leave the casino, you can ask for a check. You're laughing. Why is that oh, so Oh, man. Weird? That's going to be tough as a, I don't know, an advantage player that, that would... I understand. Be traveling with checks. Before you get on the airplane, stop by the local whatever and convert it to a money order. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If it's if you're dri if you're going to be doing a long drive through some iffy states, Mississippi, Arizona, Missouri is from what I understand. Definitely Michigan. These yes. are these are places not to be pulled over. Tennessee on I seventy five, from what I hear. Um, so all of that together, but, you know, get a money order. How hard is that? It is, it's, it's a pain in the ass, but until it's safely in your bank account, and it's going to generate a CTR. If you're just an advantage gambler, this fear of CTRs yeah. and even SARs for the last 30 years has probably caused you nothing but to increase the value of the company that makes Tums. So you could do that. That's helpful. Uh, what else could you do? Well, I think you hit on the big ones. You know, don't do anything suspicious with the money, how you're stashing it. Don't say, sure, check my car. But remember, they took Gina's money and she had it wide open and said, yes, I have it. Yeah. And I want you to know I have it and I want it gambling. And yet there was some thief with a federal badge mm -hmm. in Atlanta who looked at that and said, wow, yeah, I can take this. Yeah. With regards to tribal casinos, do we have any rights? Yes. Okay. You have the right to give them your money. <laughs> no, you have rights. First rule, don't sue the tribe. Yes, that's ever, right. Ever, ever, mm -hmm. ever. Okay? If you sue them in tribal court, you're going to lose. They're the tribe. Yes. Okay? <laughs> if you sue them in regular court, they have sovereign immunity. If you stay away from attacking the treasury of the tribe mm. the courts may let it exist there is no there are no meaningful rights against an indian casino there are no meaningful rights against an indian police force there are meaningful rights against individual police officers and individual gaming employees of the tribe but not the casino not the tribe not the police force. And if you put any of those within a country mile of the, of the heading in your pleadings, the court, and there are examples of this, will say, obviously, just joining the individuals is a, sub, is a subterfuge and you're going for the deep pocket of the tribe, the police, or the uh, casino. So don't do it. And no, I'm not, by the way. When I sue like that, I'm suing like that. It is the tribe's fault if they want to indemnify. I'm not forcing them to do so. I'll take $70 a week for the intentional tort for the rest of that guy's life, who is the sergeant in the police force, who decided that he had more authority over my client's freedom than my client did. What are you most proud of in your career of defending advantage players and civil, civil liberties? You know what makes a wonderful question? When the interviewee does not have a ready answer. <laughs> um, in a sense, it might be a case I recently did that is not so much a casino case. It's a police case 
And uh, from my perspective, what it did was say to the Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department, no, you're wrong. You can't just stop and frisk anybody at any time for any or no reason, because this police department has a habit of doing that. Mm. I'm also very proud of the Goodman case. I'm proud of the cop cases, mm. not so much, and especially the cop cases where the cops are with the casinos. Mm. It's the United States constitutional cases that deal with overreaching that are the most abhorrent. Mm. And the people who are running our governments, states, local, and federal, all think that police officers should have a special ability to violate constitutional rights without getting sued for some of the most stupid things that any human being would never do. Hmm. And yet they let them off the hook. And that's qualified immunity as it's applied today. I've made inroads against it. I couldn't be prouder of every little chink I've put in that armor. Thank you so much. You should be proud of that. I totally understand being more proud of those, uh, those cases against police officers abusing their, uh, the badge. But from the AP community, we're thankful for what you've done. As, as Tommy Highland said, you're the best. Oh. <laughs> thank you for thank you for making the advantage play world a better place than it was uh, when you when you got involved. I, I hope I hope it is, and I'm glad it's recognized. If it is, thanks so much. Thank you. Is there anything else you want to share? No. All right. Well, thank you so Buy much. Buy my book. <laughs> there you go. Either one of them. <laughs>